Hello, how are you doing? I hope you had a good month uh, over August and that you had a chance to read some good things. Uh, if you have read anything really good, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. I always love getting suggestions and I just really enjoy hearing about what you've been reading lately. And uh, so over the month of August, it has been very gray and overcast uh, here in England, uh, not very summery weather, which has lent itself to sitting inside and reading quite a lot. Uh, which I really enjoyed. And although I realize now that as I'm saying this, there's a streak of sunlight going across the, the books um, behind me there uh, because of the way the light is reflecting through a window opposite and then through my window. But anyway, so it's kind of contradicting what I'm saying here. But believe me, it's been very gray here in England. And, uh, and so I have read a lot of books. So I'm going to go through and talk about my thoughts and feelings about them. I always have lots of feelings about what I've been reading. And you'll notice here that there's quite a lot of Booker Prize nominated books. And I didn't like necessarily intend for my reading to be so dominated by the Booker Prize, but it just sort of worked out that way. And I've just been keen to get to lo a lot of these books and really curious what I would make of them. So yeah, I've read a lot of books um, that are Booker Prize nominated, as well as a couple of books um, for a Woman in Translation Month. And uh, so I'm gonna yeah get into all my thoughts about them. But if if you have any thoughts about these books and uh, want to react to my reactions to them or if you're interested in reading them now, um, I'd love to know about that in the, the comments below as well. So I think first I'll talk about these books in translation because these are books that haven't been talked about as much here on Booktube or on Goodreads and all of those places. So um, the first book um, which I was really curious about is The Liquid Land uh, by Raffaella Edelbauer and uh, who is an Austrian author and this is her debut novel I believe and it was written in German and it was uh, translated by Jen Kaleha and it is the story of a woman named Ruth who's a physicist and at the very beginning of the novel she gets a phone call uh, informing her that both her parents have died in a car crash and she is completely grief stricken and shocked by this news, of course, and uh, and decides to um, go to uh, where her parents come from, where they originate from in this small town in Austria, which um, she hasn't been to since she was like very young or um, and so uh, to try to reconnect with this place and it follows her journey there um, which is a quite a strange surreal journey um, it sort of feels like Alice in Wonderland how she sort of falls into this place because it's a place which isn't recognized on any maps of, of Austria and and so yeah she she has to kind of discover a, a path there and so yeah it's quite a strange surreal real journey and uh, but also describes the world in the way because she is a physicist that's working on a PhD and I think she sees the world almost in this different way where you know like reality is sort of seen almost on a subatomic level you know how in in subatomic particles there's a lot of empty space and and the nature of reality is very strange at that level and she almost describes the environment around her like this and I just found that so fascinating because I, I find the concepts of, of physics um, really, really fascinating, though I don't understand very much about them. But I really enjoyed how she worked that into the fiction and it becomes part of the book and and part of the surreal journey of going to this very particular land, which is almost like medieval or like feudal in style, um, how the, the town is very like old fashioned and it's run by a countess who basically owns the entire town. And so, yeah, she falls into this land and and learns about the workings of it and becomes an, a part of the community and sort of integrates into it and learns more about her parents past as well as the mysterious past of this town um, which has a lot of secrets and a lot of mysteries to it um, especially concerning World War II and some people some bodies of, of the dead that have gone missing and and the the um, the, the central theme of this town is that there's uh, it's sort of slowly sinking into the 
the earth. Um, there's there's a giant hole underneath uh, this town, which um, is causing a lot of subsidence in the buildings and the entire town to sink into the earth. But also, the citizens are like throwing things into this hole, trying to forget them. And so, yeah, there's this whole mystery behind this story, and you follow her very strange journey. And I thought it was so fascinating and intriguing and really imaginative and it's slightly creepy as well as you can probably tell by the cover of this book which is is, is kind of a sweet drawing in a way but when you look at it it seems quite odd and and creepy um, as well and that that sort of tone of a sort of um, slight horror tone is in the narrative as well though I mean it never you know gets into like really blatant horrifics but um, but there's just this unsettling quality you know to the the narrative and I thought that was so um, intriguing as well and and yeah the, the way it plays out um, is is very interesting and so it gave me a lot to think about and I, I thought it was really interestingly written I don't know if it like entirely worked there there are like aspects of it if you like sort of dissect and and try to figure out more about like well how does this town actually work um, if you're not seeing it in this sort of surreal light or in this kind of dreamlike way um, does does this like the economies of this and and the the interaction between this town and the outside world does that actually work I'm not really sure um yeah if you like examined it too closely but but just for the imagination of the the narrative I I really enjoyed this and rated it quite highly so um so yeah I, I think this is a fascinating um work of like literature and and yeah I was so glad that I like took a chance on this and discovered it because I think it sort of played with some of my like favorite themes of of kind of like physics and and uh and surrealism and and yeah and, and just playfully incorporated them into the story so uh, so yeah I would really recommend this book and I also read uh, The Child by Christy A. Skomsveld and uh, it is translated from the Norwegian by Martin Aitken and uh, and this is quite a, a brief novel that is very lyrical in tone and it's sort of following the thought process of a woman who's given birth to her second child and she's uh, she's writing to that child so it's written in the second person and she's giving her thoughts and impressions of the world and and it is a very like impressionistic take on her life and her experiences and her thoughts and and her feelings um all going into this this um the the birth of her second child and following that child and and reflecting back on her early life and uh and i thought it was really beautifully written and there's some very moving passages all about sort of the course of life and and she's someone who feels like she's come to things late in her life of of getting married and giving birth and and that other people in her life sort of got there first and so you know we always like judge ourselves and our progress in life against people we know and our contemporaries and so I think it really captures that that perspective and those feelings really well and uh, and especially how she's reflecting her experience against some people she knows in her life like a great aunt of hers um, who who's much older and is starting to experience dementia and sort of comparing her experiences to this great aunt I, I found so moving and powerful and really beautiful and also um, she's a writer and she wants to um, continue writing but finds it quite difficult in the the, the stress and the responsibilities of, of having a sec second child and so she describes that process as as well and she has a, a friend who's also a writer who committed suicide and so she's sort of pairing her experiences against his and and um, yeah, sort of looking at these different paths in life and and the way our creative expression can be stymied by the experiences of life or can be inspired by it and and how it discusses all that I thought was really meaningful and interesting uh, but there were some aspects of the book where she goes a lot into her complicated relationship um, with the man that she's had children with and which I found slightly less effective or or less interesting I, I it was more this kind of generic in, look at sort of relationships or or like a very specific way of looking at like relationships where it feels like a friend is telling you in detail about their 
emotional woes of their relationship and and you you sort of listen as a friend but uh but it, it's not actually all that interesting once you get into the detail of it so yeah i was less compelled by that part of the book but overall i thought it was a really beautiful um interestingly told story and um yeah a really like powerful voice it sort of reminded me of jesse greengrass's novel sight it takes a slightly different stance on that um but also it reminded me of that in the way that it sort of omits certain details about her life since she's it's so much in her perspective and she's writing the second person so I guess she doesn't feel the need to explain aspects of her life like how she makes money how her family sort of gets by do they have money already or does she have work on the side I sort of assume she doesn't make her full living as a writer and sort of those aspects aren't really covered and addressed and and those things sort of like Jesse Greengrass did that in her novel as well and I I do get slightly perturbed by um, when authors leave out real world details like that where it feels like well it's all very well exploring the emotional life of a character but you want to see how you know the real world is impacting them of these like practicalities of how you actually get on in the world and are able to support yourself and um and so yeah i i had a slight issue with that that it sort of omitted those details but um but overall yeah i, I thought it was really beautifully written and and quite interesting and uh i read an island by karen jennings you know sort of the odd one out in the the booker prize list and um and i have to say i really enjoyed a lot of these booker prize books um well the um, there's one or two which I enjoyed you know quite a lot less but now I'll get into all the the details of that but yeah this is the the book that um obviously like not as many people had heard of before um it's published by a small publisher and the author really struggled to get this novel published at all and I thought it was so fascinating and powerfully written I wasn't sure about it at first when I started reading this and you get into the story of a man who's living on an island um, who's tending a life house there all by himself and uh, and it starts in a very eerie and creepy way he describes how the bodies of refugees periodically just wash up on the shore of the island and uh, and when one such individual washes up on the shore of the island um, he calls the authorities to, to ask what should be done with it and the authority figure he speaks to asks what is the color of the skin of of this person who was washed up on the island and that is such a striking and powerful line i i thought because it i was really taken aback i was like oh so this is really highly politicized in terms of of race and and you get this such a strong sense of of how you know some lives are considered more valuable than than others and i thought that was so striking and as we follow him we we start to learn that he's been severely traumatized in his life he's he's a fairly older man i i think he's in his 60s or 70s um and yeah so he's sort of late in his life and um and he's gone through a lot and you get these bits and pieces at first about his his past and i found that quite disorientating at first because it jumps a lot between different periods in in his life but then i started to realize well that's how he really comprehends the world in this severely traumatized state that he's in um that's that's how he's learned to to cope with it of sort of suppressing memories and not thinking about these things but then obviously they will pieces of the past will flash up in his mind and and he sort of has to think about them especially when one individual washes up on shore who turns out not to be dead and um so he cares for for this man who um he doesn't speak the same language as as him and um and sort of yet takes care of him on on the island at first and uh and and so they they had this uneasy relationship with each other where they can't really communicate with each other and uh, so so yeah you follow that story as well as his backstory uh, as a um, someone who grew up in quite severe poverty in a country in Africa um, which is never named um, although this author is South African so you can sort of maybe make assumptions that um, it's sort of probably talking about South Africa uh, but um, but yeah his experiences growing up in poverty and then getting involved in um, some crime and then getting involved in uh, a, a movement of 
for change in the country of uh, and then when the country comes under a fascist leader um, his rebelling against that and protesting against that and then being thrown in jail and so yeah he's gone through a lot and you follow all these different stages and you come to understand really why he wants to live in complete solitude and, and can't live with other people and there's one point where he tries to go back to the mainland and finds that he just can't and he, he kind of freaks out and and wants to go back to his life of solitude because he's he's rejected this this early life of his and and this country and so as a look of at national identity i think it's so fascinating because you know the the title of this you know it comes from that that famous line of of no man is an island and uh, and this kind of makes a very good case of why some people do feel like they they need to be an island uh, because of the way that they've tried to integrate and work with society hasn't worked um, through various different stages in this this country's uh, evolution um he he's hasn't been able to to live um in any way made any kind of happy life for himself and he's he's one of these people that he's not a hero and he's not a villain and you see him as a very fully rounded individual and i thought that was so powerful how karen jennings did that and writing his character and that that sometimes we feel quite critical of what he does and then other times we feel very sympathetic and and see how he's been victimized and used um by different people and and yeah i found that that's so powerful and interesting and um and how he he's just sort of wanted to stay peaceful and not be violent um as a way of sort of drifting by like i think probably the majority of people do in society rather than you know being um, a great like hero of society or or being like a scourge upon society and 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 using it and um yeah most of us i think just want to sort of drift by and live our lives and and be as happy as we can and i feel like that's that's who his character is and and uh, and yeah so i found it's such a fascinating, powerful story and, and so interesting that, you know, thinking about the Booker Prize list and comparing this to G Damien Galgett's novel as an example of another South African writer and another writer that is writing about a white experience and consciously not giving the experience of non-white individuals because the author isn't in a place where they can represent that that experience and so i think it's they like both damon galgett and karen jennings it's quite right that they they didn't write from the experience of of non-white individuals but in this novel you do get slight inklings of what the the refugee who washes up on shore is sort of thinking and feeling from his actions and the way he reacts to the main character and and uh, and so yeah i found that quite powerful and interesting and but it does you know make me think and wonder like like oh do we need another white perspective on sort of life in south africa like like shouldn't we we be getting other perspectives and and so that is like an issue that has sort of come up which doesn't have to do with either the authors or the the prize or the publishers necessarily but i think it is an issue that that needs to be addressed and like and, and thought about so <laughs> that that is uh one yeah issue that's come up thinking about the the book prize uh, and I also read The Fortune Man by Nada, Nadifa Muhammad. And this is such a fascinating story um, because it's about a real life historical figure named Mahmoud, um, who was living in Wales in the 1960s, I believe, um, who was accused of a crime that he didn't commit and uh, and suffered for it greatly and was punished for it. And, and his family suffered for it as well. And so it's recreating that story and that community in in Wales during that that time and that period of British history and uh, and so yeah again like looking at the Booker Prize and looking at the representation of, of race in in different books and and issues of to do with racism I think it's so interesting how this novel is re-examining this aspect of the past which a lot of people probably really didn't know know about even though this this case was 
was publicized, and and there were um, movements to to try to get his um, the the resolution of of his case like overturned and and to to bring justice to his case. Um, but he's such an interesting, complicated individual because he's not a saint. He um, he is involved in gambling, and he um, and he sometimes um, resorts to petty thievery, um, especially to, to get presents for people that he loves. And, um, and so, yeah, he's, he's definitely not a saint, uh, but she explores his life and experience um, so intensely and vividly. And, and you see how he is persecuted in such an unjustified way and, and is the, the victim of a lot of casual uh, racist violence and and the the sense this gives to him as a person um, going through every day never knowing when this uh, he's he's going to be attacked like this um, I thought that was represented so powerfully in this novel and uh, and also the the perspective of um, other parts of the community as well um, the um, the the, the case is made against him when a Jewish shopkeeper is violently murdered and uh, robbed one night and, and so he's accused of this crime. Um, so it also looks at the perspective of this Jewish family that, that suffered this loss and, um, and so looking at different uh, aspects of, of this Welsh community, um, different immigrant communities and how um, these different communities sort of uneasily brush up against each other, um, how sometimes they can support each other um, but how sometimes they can really take each other down and and he finds when he's accused of this crime that um, that members of his own community speak out against him um, because a reward is offered um, if information can be led to, to who killed this this shopkeeper and um, so yeah it's a really interesting complex story which like at first I I was sort of wondering like well maybe um, the author could have just written a nonfiction book about this but because of the vivid vivid way she brings you into the lives of the character and representing this historic experience which um, which does reflect on our current times because you can definitely see repercussions of these this sensibility and the ways that immigrants have been treated um, in this country uh, for decades um that the repercussions of that the way she represents that in the the fiction um i think is so powerful and, and interesting um where the narrative didn't work quite so well for me was when it got into the actual court case of it and was recreating the the court case of that i found that a bit uh dry in a way i mean and it just sort of felt like it was sort of going through the the motions of of uh going through the the court case even though it was obviously a uh, complete injustice and and you feel so angry I, at least i felt really angry you know that he really couldn't get like he was expecting that he was going to be able to get a fair trial um but then it becomes very obvious that he's not going to be able to to get that and so i did feel very angry and emotional about that but just the actual writing of it felt quite like dry and um and yeah not as original as the earlier parts of the book but yeah that's that's just my feeling about it but overall i thought it was a very powerful novel and and i'm really glad that i i got to it because it's it's listed for the prize uh, i also read uh, china room by sanjeev sahoda and um and this is a novel i've been really wanting to to get to as well um because the premise of the story is so enticing that at at the beginning uh, a woman in the early 1900s in a uh, rural farm in Punjab um, is married off to uh, a, a, a man. Um, she and two other women are married off to three brothers, um, but she doesn't know which of the brothers is her husband. Um, she it's, It was a joint ceremony and she is made to wear a veil the entire time that um, she is is with any of the or around any of the brothers and um, yeah and she's not told um, who is her husband and that's such an like enticing terrifying premise and uh, and 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 sort of feels like a sort of dystopian type situation but then you realize that this actually happened to to people in the past and and is probably still occurring to, to some people and in, in some communities and and yeah that's that's so 
striking and powerful and 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 really wakes you up i think in a way and uh and and so that is one side of the story but then the other side of the story is a more present day story where a man uh, um who is of Indian descent is um, but has grown up in England and lived here most of his life. Um, he travels back to India during one summer um, to revisit his family home and connect with and stay with an uncle there. Um, but then finds there's he has some difficulty and um, because he is getting over he's trying to overcome a drug addiction and he comes into conflict with his aunt and um, so he gives goes to live on this farm that his great grandmother um, who's portrayed you know in the the early earlier section of the the story uh, to reconnect with that family history and it's a it's an alternating narrative going back and backwards and forwards in time and the way it creates this like layered story by by having this movement in time I think is is so effective um, because you get little images and little details of physical things on this farm but also things that happened and uh, and so learn the the mystery of of what happened in the past and 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 what happened to this woman that was married off sort of anonymously and uh, and and yeah and how he does that i think was so moving and and effective for me i found it really powerful and also something i loved about this book is there are themes and imagery in it um which you gradually learn over time and i'm um, just looking at the british cover of this novel you can see these green flashes of shapes of sort of like almost the ghost figures of parrots in the background and only by reading the book you understand what those images mean and I love it when you read a book and uh, and sort of look at the cover and think oh that's interesting and but then once you know the story and then you look at the cover again and you can see details like that which have so much more meaning and uh, and so yeah I, I just really like that as like as as a reader I think that that gives you such a like lovely little bit of pleasure <laughs> when when you're reading um, so I also read Light Perpetual by Francis Spuffer and I I was I was really looking forward to to this and I felt quite conflicted about it at first because the the premise is about a, a group of people that uh, die in a working class neighborhood of South London during World War II when a German rocket lands on uh, the area they live in and a number of them die and so he takes the case of five children from who who died in that explosion and uh, and tells the story of their lives as if they had lived and I was feeling at first that like maybe this is just a gimmick because if you take out that section in the beginning where he describes it and he does describe it in a really beautiful and poetic way if you take that out then really it's just like a any historical novel following five different individuals over the course of their lives and you follow them over many years um i think over 50 years of of their lives and and um and through the entire course of their life and in doing so following these different decades of british history and and so showing the evolving culture through their particular stories and and that was well written and, and interesting but then it made me wonder like well does it even need this premise of that these were people that actually died but then when I started thinking about it I thought no that is quite a powerful statement to make because so many alternate histories of the worlds that we that we get in fiction are about either like famous figures and they do something different and that changes the course of history or some event changes and then that event changes the course of history and you know drastically reconfigures the world into an unrecognizable place um, that is very different from the our current reality but what he does in this alternate history is shows the lives of five different individuals who aren't you know significant historical figures in the sense that they're really not known other than being a number amongst uh, a lot of people that that died in uh, German attacks and 
And so he shows over the course of their lives how they make these subtle differences in the lives of people around them and in their communities, which probably do affect the world in a way, but not in a way that you know we would ne necessarily recognize in the way that history is written. And so I think that is quite an effective and powerful device when you, when you think about it a bit more in that way and and I know you know that that does you know that might not necessarily come through in the the reading experience but I think because it is prize nominated it's like it's made me think about and reflect on this book more than maybe I, I necessarily would and and so when you think about these these layers of what he's actually doing in the narrative then that that is quite powerful but then you know saying that <laughs> as a piece of just fiction that I was reading and enjoying it does sort of suffer from that thing where you're very closely following the lives of a number of different characters and just naturally I was more invested in some of the characters lives than some of the other characters lives and so I yeah I, I was almost like racing through some sections because I wanted to get back to a character that I was enjoying their their life more like there's one character that's a musician and she has this almost sense of like synesthesia like her senses get mixed up when she hears music she like sees a color and and following her journey as a musician I thought was really fascinating and also one character that suffers quite badly from mental health issues and following his storyline and uh, and so yeah overall I, I found um, it compelling compelling but not entirely effective as as a story um, so so yeah a really interesting one to think about and and consider uh, then I read Second Place by Rachel Cusk, which is a novel that I was most trepidatious about, but which I was also most kind of excited to, to try because I've only read Outline by Rachel Cusk. That's the only novel I've read by her. And that is a novel that I had a lot of issues with. I mostly enjoyed it and I thought it was interesting, but I didn't really agree with the writing style, or at least I didn't think that it was effective. In, in a way for me. I know it's effective for a lot of people and she's a much lauded writer and she's written many novels, uh, but um, but yeah, it just didn't entirely work for me and I lot, had a lot of issues with it. And and so going into reading this, I, I basically had the same experience where I like mostly enjoyed the experience and I thought it brings up a lot of interesting issues, but the more I think about it, the more annoyed I get <laughs> because, so the story is about a woman who lives on a rural property on the coast, on a sort of marshland, and she, um, she has a fairly, she, uh, it's it's never entirely stated like how much money she has or, or, or anything like that, but she has a comfortable lifestyle. And on this, property on this this um, she has a second house which is a kind of guest house which she and her husband have refashioned um, to be a location that artists can come stay at both writers and visual artists can come stay at as a kind of retreat and so she invites a man um, to come stay on this this painter that she's been very affected by his artwork over time and she invites him to stay on this property but the the actual story begins in a with a very strange scene where she's recalling a time where she's been chased around Paris by someone she labels as the devil and uh and it's this very strange almost surreal sort of like experience where she feels very like hounded by the this person and um and then as the story goes on and she develops this relationship with the with the artist she, that comes to stay there um it becomes much more she kind of hopes that he will uh be able to inspire her or or like fulfill a part of her life that she feels is kind of missing but as time goes on they develop a very antagonistic relationship and uh, which feels sort of like more paranoia than him actually doing things um, to be like aggressive or 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 at least like at first um, they're just sort of having conversations and she'll suddenly lash out um, against him and and I felt like that was really uh, yeah it, it 
shows almost more a sign of paranoia and like she has been someone that's been really traumatized and damaged and um and so and that's why she's reacting to him that way and so i was like wondering like well what actually happened in her past and we never really get that and i found that really frustrating and also because the story is so centered on her own experience that she's kind of talking about her life and thoughts about her life and 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 in a very grandiose way um that it feels so self-centered that i got really frustrated that it just felt like an act of egocentrism and i felt that really came through in one particular line where she writes uh let me let me find the line yeah she she writes Everybody else, it seemed to me, lived perfectly happily in themselves. Only I drifted around like a vagrant spirit, cast out of the home of myself, to be buffeted by every word and mood and whim of other people. And when I read that line, I, I suddenly like realized, oh, she really sees herself as this victim and everyone else is going about their lives like quite happily at least that's what she believes but i feel like that shows a real lack of imagination that she is not sort of empathizing with other people and taking into account other people's feelings and also because she describes how she is so inert and doesn't really she's she's not very active person she actually describes how she just sort of sits there a lot of the time and does nothing does absolutely nothing and so she's almost like inventing these it feels like she's inventing these problems in order to have some interest or drama in her life and that might not be true she she might have some traumatic experiences that she's she's working through and but but you never really understand where she's coming from i didn't really understand her as a character so i felt like i couldn't i couldn't understand like literally couldn't understand these issues that she's trying to to work through and and so yeah i got quite frustrated with this book especially like thinking back on it um but i mean i feel like in a way rachel cusk was trying to play f like there there is almost like humor in this and how she she writes her her character in this such a like i think she almost like realizes that she's so self-absorbed but she doesn't care she doesn't interrogate that um as much as i think she should have if if this is going to be more of like a satirical like novel so so yeah it just it just didn't really work for me and it felt like more like it was striving for profundity rather than actually saying something interesting most of the time I and mean, there were certain lines that i did think like oh that that's quite an interesting perspective or or a curious perspective or made me wonder more but like i said i just i because I didn't understand her and her position, I I really couldn't understand where these arguments were were coming from, or or what she was even really trying to to say in this book. So, yeah, I found it quite a frustrating experience uh, overall, and I probably won't be reading any more Rachel Cusk, whether she's nominated for a book prize or or not. But but I was glad to to give it another chance. Um, so. I, I also read um, Great Circle and Bewilderment by Richard, Richard Powers and um, I'm not going to go into detail about these books very much because I, I made whole videos um, devoted to each of these books and, um, and so I'll put links below if you want to know more of my thoughts and feelings about that if you um, haven't watched those videos yet. Um, but yeah, overall I really enjoyed both of these books. I think they're both really successful and fascinating and moved me and yeah i got so emotionally invested in each of these books um something i didn't mention about the great circle was i thought she gets so much of the technical details because it's about a pilot's life the technical details about flying um she conveys that in a really interesting and effective way i thought without being too uh specific about things that I felt like I was lost or, or I was just getting technical details or like it was an author that had researched something and then put it in a novel. It felt very well integrated into the story, how she writes about that. And so I think um, that's one of the aspects which makes this a really great historical novel, or at least the historical novel side of the book, um, because there's also a more present day side of the book, um, which I think isn't as powerful as the more historical side. but. Um, but does like 
Sanjeev Sahoda's book um, does give such an interesting perspective by reflecting on the the past from the present and getting details about the past from the present and yeah it was was so good and yeah Richard Power's Bewilderment is is such an amazing book I, I just am still bowled over by the powerful message of it of what it says about the environment but also as our culture and society and how it's evolving forward or or not or how we're sort of moving towards like disaster um but something i do want to add about this book was that i had a conversation with a friend of mine who'd also read it and who had some real big issues with it um which i hadn't really thought of before concerning its uh depiction of autism um because the the son of the main character um has an autistic child or who's a child who's somewhere on the spectrum and and the representation of that um i think does should be considered more more closely and you know it's it's not an experience i have much um knowledge about and and so you know i just read it as a piece of fiction and sort of took it all in in that way but if you know i knew someone who suffered from autism or or had that experience with autistic people um i yeah might have very different feelings about it so um so yeah i i am interested in hearing more responses about this and and having more debate about this this issue because i think it's it's a really interesting point of view and and one that i you know personally can't contribute that much to you know like i said because i don't have much experience of it but um but yeah so the i think there'll be more interesting things to to say about this um when it is finally published on september 21st or at least that's when it's coming out here in the uk so those are my thoughts about all of these books um like i said if if you have any thoughts or feelings about them or if you're interested in reading any of these books now i i'd love to hear about that in the comments below but i'd also love to hear about what you've been reading over the course of the past month and so i hope you're doing well and i will speak to you again soon bye bye